Welcome back to PSC Tech Byte. This week we will talk about how to localize SharePoint framework solutions uh, in order to provide uh, localized text messages to the end users using your client-side web part or extensions. Just to make an example, whenever you create a client-side web part, you will have a log folder inside the main folder of the client-side web part, and within the log folder, you will find uh, a mystrings.d.ts file uh, defining the list of resource strings that you will support or will provide with your solution, as well as an nus.js file, which will define the default uh, text messages for the default language, which is uh, the American English. And you can create as many local.js files as you like in order to provide support uh, for multiple locales uh, in your solution. You can also uh, localize the content of the manifest file of a web part, for example, to provide a custom title, custom description, uh, localized in every single locale that you want to support. And in order to debug your solution, you can provide a debug locale uh, argument in the write manifest uh, uh, JSON file uh, uh, of your uh, uh, solution. Moreover, if you want, you can also localize the text messages of custom components that you create uh, by yourself uh, in your solution. So let's move to the demo environment and let's see how to do that in practice. Here we are in Visual Studio Code and we have uh, a solution uh, with the client-side web part which has been localized in multiple languages. As you most likely already noticed, whenever you create uh, a client-side web part or a client-side extension, and the human generator creates for you the log folder with uh, a couple of files in there. So the mystrings, the TS file uh, that we talked about uh, before during the slide deck, uh, as well as uh, a .js file with the resource strings uh, uh, values uh, for the American English language. In the mystrings.d.ts file, you will find an interface uh, with uh, a bunch of string properties which will represent the entry point to access a fully typed uh, uh, approach uh, to your resource strings. Well, if you want to create multiple or to support multiple languages, you simply need to create uh, uh, as many .js files as you need, giving them uh, as a name the locale that you want to target. For example, here the Italian language, it-it.js, uh, and you can provide the translation for the target language for all of the messages. At the same time, you can also provide uh, a translated uh, text uh, for the title and the description of the web part. Uh, here, the default will use the uh, out-of-the-box default language, and then you can provide uh, a localized uh, text uh, for the title, even for the group, if you like, and for the description. And so, uh, just for the sake uh, of showing you the uh, result, uh, I will run gulp uh, serve no browser and i will go into the workbench uh, online in sharepoint online to show you this web part which is right now running with the default language that is the english one so it's a matter of a few seconds and now we are ready to play with this web part so let me refresh this page and within the workbench let me add uh, the sample uh, uh, local sample web part and as you can see the web part is rendered in uh, english language now let me go back, let me stop the uh, Node.js server. Let me show you that if you go to the right manifest JSON file and you change uh, or you add, because by default you don't have this item, you add uh, a value of the bug locale with the specific language that you want to use for debug, you can save, uh, you can run one more time the gulp serve uh, no browser, for example. And as soon as the Node.js server will be ready, the web part will be converted uh, into the or presented in the Italian language rather than in the English one. So let me refresh this page. And as you can see now, all the text messages here as well as in the uh, edit panel are provided in Italian language. How can we do that? Well, inside the web part, there is always out of the box the import of strings uh, from the uh, interface that defines uh, our uh, localized strings. And this guy, this one, uh, is the one uh, defined here in the module uh, that declares uh, strings uh, of type, uh, uh, the interface that defines uh, all of the resource strings. Moreover, you can do the same import if you are using React in the React components that you have in your web part, as like as I'm doing here, and you can reference the strings uh, in the uh, React components as like as you do in the uh, uh, client-side web part uh, source code. 
Moreover, you can also uh, create custom lock folders with custom localized resources if you need them, for example, for custom components uh, or whatever kind of customization. You will simply need to go to the config.json file and you will need to add in the localized resources uh, uh, section your uh, item with the name that you defined in the my strings file, sorry, this one, as well as uh, with the uh, uh, relative path of the uh, lock folder and with the reference to the locale.js file that will be used based on the locale uh, that you want to provide and to support. So it's pretty easy to provide localized, localized content in client-side web parts or in client-side extensions. And again, you simply need to create uh, as many JS files as you need uh, with the resource strings corresponding to the name of the properties of this interface. And of course you can extend it. And then you simply make an import of the uh, type of the module that you defined and then you can simply use those uh, strings uh, saying strings dot and the name of the property which will be mapped to the uh, uh, actual value of the resource string in the current language as usual thank you for watching this video i hope you found it useful and interesting and i'm looking forward to seeing you next week thank you